great. Was that, and of course, that was a relief that I finally, it only took me like 30 years, but finally I made it into a, an episode. <laughs> <laughs> ago in Toronto, you came with Sarah Sutton. Sorry? You came to Toronto 30 years ago with Sarah Sutton. That's right. I re yeah. You don't remember me. Just pretend you know me. <laughs> okay. I remember she was doing a panel and I was in the audience. And I had any questions. So I, yeah, Miss Sutton, can I... <laughs> Yeah, oh yeah. And uh, there's no aircon there, obviously. 
and, and if you're wearing a hot costume, I felt sorry for the sort of the monster. It was just so hot for me. But we were we, we were lucky. I mean, nowadays actors have green screen and CGI. We had actually sets to work in. I feel sorry for that. You know, you pretend that's a space station. It's a green cloud curtain. You know, that's a, we had luckily we had sets to work in, particularly in the underground set. Oh, that's so we, we did the Five Doctors. Uh, I suppose we actually all the way through with Patrick and the Five Doctors, but Emmerdale, the TV company I was working for, they wouldn't let me off in the, in the summer holidays. So I said, I just need extra two weeks to go. So I rang John, John and Turner. I said, they wouldn't let me off. He said, well, what do you mean? Look, if you get two days off, just call me. And I rang him, I said, I've got an expensive Thursday. Good, good, right, you're in. And that night, a fax, I decided, well, a fax came. Well, the script is, I do, print is right, ah! <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to do? I, well, I want to see Paris again, I want to see Patrick again, so I went down to do it. And J&T, the shop one in the, in the uh, studio, and when I was leaving to come back to, to Yorkshire, John Nathan in terms of, it was just like you and Patrick have been in a prop cover for 16 years, that's how long it was. Would you like to do some more? I said, love to, so if I hadn't done those three lines in the final, I wouldn't have done the two doctors. Yeah. And it was great, it was, it was very sweet. Um, and she had the bit where she, she I can lick the blood. And that was her, I think that was, that was her idea. But when we did the, um, the commentary for the two doctors, we all took turns, you know, and, we, and you read and you look at it and, right, that is darling, what do I do? That's all you just watch and, and say, what should I say? That's all they feel good. If you could bring to see me walking across, you can just say, oh yes, it was, it was such a hot day, all these shoes were killing me. But perhaps they weren't. Well, no, just, <laughs> just, just see what you see here, you know, so you can see yourself. I love you. At the hotel trying to get served, and there were an awful lot of uh, customers who not read any bar staff, and they were constantly being ignored and not getting service. So Jacqueline said, leave it to me, darling, don't worry. And she went to the corner of the bar. She got her top and she basically flashed the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Who came rushing over and they got served in Indian? Admittedly, that sounds like the kind of story you make up. Oh. But from the circumstances and knowing John the way I did, I think that might well have been oh, true. I don't like the animation because I think they're better actors than us. <laughs> <laughs> There are a couple of things which I've, I've said to the animators, you know, um, in the Mac of Terror, I said, you know, oh God, you know, did, did you get the right orange for those shots in this film recently that uh, obviously Russell is bringing uh, Bob Langford back as well. Yes, and then oh. the movie, so there's no reason why they wouldn't do that. I, yeah, personally, I don't quite like that. I don't, I don't want to steal your thunder or ruin your idea if this is what your idea is, but the idea of having a story where maybe there is some sort of slightly shadow, shadowy older figure. Yeah going through the story, and then suddenly at the end it turned out to be Jamie. Yeah, yeah. Well, it would be a great reveal. It would be a really interesting way of, of um, using my hand. Well, you know, I'm only in the tip of my obsession with Russell T. Davis. I saw Fraser at the airport. Actually, it is. Even about Sprite, it's not on a Zimmer frame. Who's <laughs> 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 it? You know, go look at his age. Just suddenly happened one day, probably at the least convenient time when you're in the middle of trying to do something else. Yeah, yeah. Do any of you guys out there have any kind of ideas of what you would like if they were to bring Jamie I'd, back? I'd be like to, to see him and Wendy together and Zoe and Jamie. Oh, but she's still Especially because yeah, yeah. of how they had to leave, it would be like a nice little closure or something. But she's yeah. still fit and healthy. Yeah, oh, she's she's yeah. Wendy yeah. looks she's like she has right an ancient yeah. day. Mm. <laughs> she's still very cute. Yeah, very cute. I'm mm. totally sure you're allowed to say that kind of thing these days. Back to, to this life. This life. And so, you know, 
that it's on record that you, when you got the gig of Doctor Who, you said, oh, I don't want to do conventions, they, they will frighten me, they, oh, I can't believe it. But, like I said, you know, it's, you've been doing them now for 20 years. Um, and, well, and then, you know, at the time it was a frightening prospect. Yeah. You know, Chris Eccleston was the same. Yeah. It's only two or three years since Chris has been there. Uh, and I remember bumping into him four or five years ago. I said, I said, I said you should have done He said, no, I want to. And he, he, he had exactly the same attitude as I did. And he said, well, why would I want to do that? Because Chris, Chris is shy. You know, he's a on that day, you know, in the London show. But we all watch Chris turn up. We watch him kind of shitting himself. <laughs> And, um, and, I, and he was, he was kind of almost shaking, you know, he didn't know what to expect. And then I, I bumped into him at lunchtime in the green room. I said, how is it? He said, it's fantastic. <laughs> and he was just, he was really, really, he said, everybody's just great, you know, everybody's really kind. I said, I told him, you know, but until you do it, you don't know that. It's another costume. You know, you know it took some organising, it's the proper thing, it's tailor-made, you know, we had to, we had to do in the stages. Um, it came about really because I saw Peter Davis as well. The same guy made the same you know, Taylor, Steve, Steve Wicks made, yeah, made uh, Peter's and it works a treat, you know, so I thought, yeah, I want my dogs. Because you've, you've described your doctor um, as having a bit of a swagger. I saw you last night walking down in that costume and I went, yeah. That's what it's about. Yeah. Yeah. It was. I, I tell you what, I, yeah. As a Doctor Who fan, it was like, that is the doctor. Well, you know, when, when it's a good costume, it does the work for you, yeah. you know, it kind of works. And this, this is a really nice costume. <laughs> no, but it's, it's great, it's great, you know, we, um... Are you going to wear it to, uh, Big Finish recordings? <laughs> <laughs> what, in my bedroom? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. Maybe I'll just wear... Wear the When it came to it, he couldn't tell me and my brother apart. <laughs> Mark. He didn't know which one it was, he couldn't remember, so we, we both had to audition. <laughs> <laughs> the way things tend to work, um, you know this anyway, but, but you know, showbiz being showbiz, and this is, I, I mean, you know, because often you, you hear rumours. Most of the, nearly all of the rumours you're going to hear aren't going to be. You know. <laughs> but that was great, because that, 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 that was a relief that I finally, it only took me like 30 years, but finally I made it into it. An episode. <laughs> 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 it time. You know what? Um, how long ago was '96? Yeah, I mean, you get, right. Get, and in all that time, I've, you know, I've done what? I don't know, three, four hundred, six-year contract, and that's a standard thing. Um, it's completely one-sided. The pilot doesn't go to series; they just dump it. Um, so, but if, but if we'd gone to see it, I would have belonged to them for six years. Six years? Yeah. So you could have, you know, you could have gone on maybe an extra year and a bit, you could have been longer than Tom Baker. Yeah. <laughs> Anything could have happened. But, and even halfway through, you know, well, I've not told this story before, but um, just because it was all going to happen, it was all going to be great, uh, our children were little then, they were, they were kind of um, primary school age. So they showed us a few schools around in Vancouver, you know, the kids are going to be Canadians. Um, we, looked, yeah, we looked at houses in the bay, and it was all going to be, you know, I was going to get rich, and it was all going to be... Um, and, that's, and, and, and of course, you know, that's, that, that's the spirit you have to work in, it's all going to be great. Um, until it isn't. I want to ask you about your friendship and relationship with the other doctors. Okay. And do you know what tomorrow is? McCoy's birthday. And how old is he tomorrow? He's 80 years old tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's quite a bit. I just um, That's amazing. The real, real heated debate. Is it before or is it after? Um, I honestly hope that it's a door that's still open for me that will hopefully be answered. So, we'll see. I wonder how much she really drinks. I do something 
And then people say, I saw you in the supermarket the other day, you dropped Kipto toilet roll. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and you think, oh, I yeah, did, didn't I? And three books um, that Paul Meyer said only Katie could do 50 voices. And in them, I'm Iris, I'm Panda. I'm uh, wardrobes, evil wardrobes that fly and eat people. Now, I'm there doing all the voices, and when you do it, you do it straight from the book. You know, you're not like doing this voice, that voice, and the other voice. My favorite, of course, was the depressed vending machine. <laughs> <laughs> and so when you pick up these books, and you look, and you, you know, and I'm just seeing, oh, there's that voice, I and of course, a lot of sort of what I call ordinary people, and then people, um, pirates and sea captains, and oh, the most, and then these plastic garbage men, and they're all made out of plastic garbage bags. And they have, you know, when you open a tin with a tin opener, and it's all jagged, right? And I had to voice that, but they don't actually. Start. When I was working with Peter Davis, a very different sort of fellow. Um, and after about 15 minutes, and we're both page girls, so we're surrounded by pages, right? And, um, oh, there's another story in that story. Um, <laughs> on the floor, as predicted. <laughs> <laughs> Which I might like still get up and down. There you go. Um, anyway, so. because they want to know. That's why you should always respect it when children keep asking questions, you know. What we want, you ain't ever doing that again. <laughs> and he, she won his respect. 
So there was a time when people say, oh, she just runs around, you know, um, she's not very clever, and she wears short skirt. You know, no. Don't be judgmental. <laughs> you know. You know, exactly. She was a girl of that kind with her clothing, right? But she was very much a strong woman. And I believe that to this day. Uh, that she was a very, very strong woman. Yeah. Did you start sharing your stories with each, with each other? How did that go when oh, we were watching behind the scenes? We together as friends and everything. I mean, there, there was nothing new to us because we all do conventions together. Um, and, you know, we have, I have very close friendships with an awful lot of them, way outside of Doctor Who. Um, you know, and, uh, and I'm now, you know, very close to Sadie and Daisy. I've just done something with both of them. Um, you have to remember, when you do all these conventions together, we're all buddies. You can see how we all work together at a convention. And that, that's friendship. Um, the moment... Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I taught a whole art therapy class today. Nobody mentioned that my fly was undone during that. <laughs> I mean, what kind of therapy is that? <laughs> Sorry, and I just had this awful vision of my fly being over again. He did Russell T, and Russell T says, you know, he said, and I suddenly think, oh, I don't this is Russell And he, he said, no, I'm a fanboy, because I was his era, as was Mark Gages and so on. So we're all absolutely one wonderful family, and I think that's why, you know, you all are the best fans in the Doctor Who fans I, in, the, in the whole world, and I can't tell you enough and often enough how much this means to me because that's the best thing to come out of Doctor Who. But also, I think you feel that we're all a family coming to visit you. you know? <laughs> the convention started and all of the 80s began. Um, and uh, I haven't seen any of it. <laughs> and the second part of that is it's on the screen, which I'm hard pushed to see as well. Oh. Um, so I actually had to learn, and because I love everybody that, that's involved, it's been great for me because I've watched as bits and pieces as much as I can. I've worked on audio with quite a few, you know, the, the doctors as we all know, including Tom Bay. Before I saw she went off with Brian Blessed, I didn't know. <laughs> and I just said, that's an interesting choice. Um, <laughs> no, but I say this so for me, I have to learn all those years, because when I was in Australia, I wasn't working, but nothing to do with Doctor Who at all. Nobody cared. And it wasn't, you know, so I was working constantly as an actress and all sorts of things. I made track show. I, you know, I did so many plays and cartoons and things like that. So, but I wasn't getting to see Doctor Who because it wasn't on every Saturday. Is it jolly well ought to be? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. You know I love you all, don't you? Silent. Well, you can talk then. Your people don't originate from Earth, do they? My people are the And they are telepathic. Guards, don't speak or make a sound. Why can't you read our minds? Because you are not telepathic. Could I read yours? To Doctor Who. So it's very nice to have a, a Doctor Who hug to make seven. That's how I see it. Yeah, I think, I think that uh, if, if you're the type of person that like those classic Tom Baker episodes of Doctor Who, they would find a similar aesthetic in Blake 7, even though the storytelling is much different. Maybe because they're past in the corridor and working with him. And, and share a few quarries too, I hear. Yeah, I, I'm sure we did, yes. Yeah. But no doubt we did. But Tom Baker just walked past and go to your head and never communicate with us. Pitches a few extra things. And after the success of the Daleks, he pitches a few things, like survivors. Blake 7. And along comes Blake 7. Tell me a little bit about those, those earliest times. Well, the first thing I knew about Blake 7 was um, 
been called for an interview with uh, producer David Maloney, who would apparently come to see a play that myself and um, David, uh, who played Dan, were in. And as a result of seeing us, spotting us on stage, we were called up to have an interview for this um, series. And um, uh, yeah, a couple of interviews. And um, the second one, I found myself a science fiction uh, thing, and they made, made it very clear that they expected it to be very popular, and we might be asked to open supermarkets, and <laughs> might be recognized, and how comfortable would we feel with all that? So, so you know, we just sort of thought, oh, well, yeah, that's okay, I think that's, that's okay, I can deal with that. Um, and really, that was really, that was the most important question they put to us was how would you feel about being in a, a, what they hoped and obviously anticipated it to be popular. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you remember very much about the first time you're going in, what the, some of the first things that you're shooting, the first scripts that you were reading? Do you remember sort of the chronology of, of, of where? Well, I, I'm very bad with those thoughts. Like I don't have a great memory. And at the time, with a young, very young, <laughs> young son, the logistics of sort of nanny and then one disappearing and finding another one and just keeping everything together was 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 a bit of a distraction and I was never great at remembering detail. I mean, my schoolwork was um, I didn't do badly, but oh my goodness, I had to work at remembering things. So I'm not going to be able to tell you a lot because it was how many years ago? Forty-eight years ago. We will. We will. I'm just listening to that early bit just now. I remember, you know, uh, articulating it uh, with sort of a certain amount of clarity as though I was sort of speaking a foreign language. I think I thought I was doing. I'm not quite clear, but I, I noticed that. But I didn't continue doing that through the series. From the start, in your first story, you're this rifle-toting rebel yeah. terrorist off to do it. So someone who we thought thought. Could be a dangerous character. Somewhere. Yes, that got kind of written down as time passed. Time. I mean, retrospect, because you don't know at the time, you don't realize that you do have any power, really. But I only recognized really right at the end, too late, that of course one did have some influence, especially after doing two series. And I could have, me and Sally could have gone and sort of. You know, appealed a bit more and said, Look, we're a bit fed up being left on the liberation while the lights go down. Can you? Excuse me. <laughs> I mean, I think the lady in my costume first thing this morning, now he says, Interrupting, where am I? <laughs> you know, uses a very similar uh, season ending cliffhanger, as Blake Seven does. It was influential on other shows because it, it was ahead of its time in putting these sort of story arcs where any character could be in danger at any time. You know, on most of the television, character was only in danger if it was the end of their contract at the end of the season. <laughs> Waiting for it. Yeah, yeah but, but not on Blake 7. You didn't know who was going to come, who was going to go. But because it was the first, it was, I guess, difficult to actually consciously think about, we're going to do a story arc. I think it's just sort of finding its way, and, and the arc comes later, doesn't it? That's just probably very true. You know, I'm, I'm over-analyzing this, but it's only because I've watched it 4,000 times. Okay, <laughs> now that I've got the conversation rolling, if anybody wants to participate, of course, just... Make fun of me like he does of uh, Villa, who has a skill that he doesn't have. He uses him like that. But we can't really use um, Callie's... Callie seems to be a bit of a truth teller. Skill of telepathy, yeah. <laughs> Probably our nerves in the like, at, at, at some point, characters like Blake and, and Avon and both are, are running their own agenda, and along comes Callie, who, like a bit of a you know, a, a, a bit of a wet blanket, says, well, you know, if you do this, it's gonna it's gonna go horribly wrong," <laughs> and they all listen to you, and it goes horribly. <laughs> <laughs> Living up to expectations. Well, you know, it, it's up? funny because you were so involved and engrossed doing it. You, you, you just you're doing the job, and I mean, you slowly notice, as I say, by I suppose the, the, the end of the second series, like kids in the street, 
you know, I walk up the street and suddenly they're going, hey! <laughs> um, that started to happen. And, um, but I mean, we weren't reading reviews or anything, we were just, it was, it was, it was hard, quite hard work really. Um, but it certainly was, there's a, a, a newish parent with an under a year old she was when I started, 10 months old. And uh, so I, that was a big distraction. I don't know, maybe some of the other crew might Call Blake Seven and there's no Blake and there isn't even a seven. They can't even count. <laughs> the lead actor is gone and the counting is and the math is wrong. Yeah. What's going on? Oh my gosh. Yeah, but uh, it's a change of direction. Introduce some new faces. Um, but a few faces are gone. What's it like losing two friends? You know, two friends who decided to step away. Yeah, it was disappointing, really. Um, I, I, but, but I mean, you know, we didn't concentrate on it, we had to move on. It was a space of five months after we finished the end of that second series, and they were moving on, and we knew at least you know, the thing was going to continue, and we were, those of us that came back were contracted, we were delighted to be so contracted again, because I suppose anything could have wound up, I guess. And um, then we delighted in welcoming Stephen, and um, things are happening, you know. She's gone into a trance again. <laughs> there we go again. Um, and uh, so, of course, when I saw that there was the opportunity to play two characters, it was really exciting to think, how can I make them? How opposite, what can I do? This is fun. So, yeah, it was lovely doing, you know, some coffee and children, and, and just the whole technical thing of children and viral was kind of fun, funny to me. Trying to make you uh, both. Uh, talking interact with each other yeah, at the talking, same time. Talking to myself, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and, and trying to carve out making uh, Callie's sister a little bit different. Uh, where do you go? Is it down to voice? Uh, how do you make... How do You're really behind it. You can't. It wouldn't be a shame. You know, we, we were all trying to do and we were doing our best work as far as we could. And um, so then they said six. Then they said three. They said one. <laughs> And he ended up, it was me. And then if I'd known, because I learned later, of course, how upset people were, <laughs> Sally was just a, I mean, that Callie was just a, a voice at the end. I think if I'd known how seriously it would have been taken, I would have made a different decision. I would at least have done two or three episodes just to make ever sure everyone was going to be happy 30 years later. <laughs> yeah, there's I was 
sounded like I had kennel cough, you know. <laughs> it was one of those really... And I had just finished uh, studio something, and they said, we really want to see you. So my agent said, look, can you go? Well, of course, myopic many here, right, goes to the BBC. Now, the BBC is... Well, it's a bit like... Have you ever seen Pr The Prisoner? Yep. <laughs> and then a big white ball <laughs> that bounces you back in. <laughs> yeah. All born's a bit like that. Um, you feel that... And it goes round and round in circles. Well, because my glasses are so thick and people work with their eyes, and back then... And I... I you're, none of you were old enough to... You got it. Come on, baby, you can do it. All right. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. Was it? Uh, yeah. It... David Maloney and Cody yeah, That's it. <coughs> Josh, you've done your homework. Oh, yeah. 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 I've been up burning the midnight oil. Yeah. <laughs> He's up there. He's, he was an angel. Yes. A Yiddish angel. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know if you recommended him. And people ask me, is somebody going to ask me, why did Stephen leave? Well, let's ask him. Why did Stephen leave? To this day, I didn't ever ask him or confront I don't confront anybody that uh, wanted me to be in his series. So uh, that's, that's sort of how it. I said yes, stupidly, but they're right. But then again, if I hadn't said yes, I wouldn't be here today, would I? Exactly. No. Yeah. No. no? Yes, no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he said to me, before I started as Blake, he said, he said, I can't, I can't offer you any bigger parts in the Shakespearean season coming up. He said, go away, play some main characters in, in, in the theatre or main characters or whatever. He said, come back and then we'll, we'll talk again. And he said, here I am, I am Blake. I said, you're, you're drunk. He said, no. He said, I am Blake, I'm going to text So he went up to the bar, spoke to Trevor. Um, and of course, uh, a, month or, a month or two later, he was offered a number of parts. I think, I think it was uh, uh, mentioned to me. I, I think uh, uh, the man who looks after me, <laughs> he, he, he mentioned that yeah, he did. Don't laugh. He came to the lunatic asylum. He asked, could I be let out and go to America? And they said, only if you could be handcuffed. No. He's still here with, with us. I know. Still here with us. Um, and talk, talk about working with Tom and, and Louise James. And did you guys get on and get on at all doing production? I know Tom could be a little. A difficult onset, but I'm curious as to your uh, ruminations from those times. No, he, he was he was never difficult when I bought him a drink. <laughs> <laughs> you need a way to get to him. Well done. Well done. Uh, yeah, I, I used there's a there's a pub in, in London. Um, I think it still is. It's sort of a media pub. It's called the French House, and the sort of history of it was where the, the French uh, resistance. Terrified as kids. <laughs> <laughs> Quatermass franchise, which yeah, yeah. starts on black and white serialised telly and becomes the, the colour film of John Mills, but in between everything, including the Hammer crossover, which was sort of a, a, an attempt to have an Americanised version of Quatermass. So he was the OVC devil on set, and the director was very, very keen that I do a sinuous snake like neck movement as the doctor walks past. And I did it for about five takes, and then I walked off set like this. <laughs> but yeah, we, the, the Cybermen, you, you, you don't do yeah. We're just all walking in unison, so there's, you know, there's no characterization there at all, really, which is a bit of a shame. I think they should do more with the Cybermen. I, I was luckier, um, having done a lot of puppetry, but also having <laughs> trained in physical theatre, is really quite astonishing. Life expectancy is a very short <laughs> She was ashamed to go back to her own people, but she had survived when the rest of the field of life went. 
These are uh, how would he, how would the master wear them? And I uh, but also goes on as a butler or a maid on occasions. I made a very good maid actually. <laughs> well, rather nice there. It was really lovely. And then of course the second time I met him, it was 2012 at that convention, and I bounced up to him and said, "Hello, Fraser." Long time Hollywood like, volunteer cosplayer, and now. Freelance journalist, um, just as a caveat for legal reasons, if there's a production I don't mention, questions, make sure your questions are not about Dr. Drew or Big Finish, so, because Paul has done a lot that's out there, so, just, oh, yeah, just, the the, the get out there. so it's just the costume that solves it, what? just the costume that solves it. Completely. Eric Idle is going to be yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and you can kind of picture it, couldn't you? Yeah, yeah. Ah. That's kind of feasible. Yeah. And then um, Phil calls me. Yeah, that was weird. 